Look at that. This is bees coming in from the field, being just kind of disoriented because of this truck. The truck is parked into their way, and all of a sudden they're like, shit, where's my home? Where's my home? And they just kind of hold in a holding pattern up on top here, kind of like my brother when he flies his um, Airbus flying into New York City and there's too many jets coming in. They just kind of fly in a holding pattern. Well, they're doing the same thing here. These are all incoming foragers full of nectar. There is a honey flow today. That is telling me that. That and... Drying honey down on the front step. That and I'm popping these lids. They're starting to pull the cappings down. So they are filling up these boxes. If I give them just maybe two more days, they'll be just a little bit heavier. And maybe that's my sweet spot. That's one advantage of these escape boards. So I have all this ability to be able to wait and wait until I find more so that perfect condition, that perfect point of time. And then we can get through 500 hives just like that. So if we start Wednesday, <clears throat> Wednesday, Thursday, we'll have 500 hives set. We'll have them flipped over. These honey boxes will be pulled up. We'll have empties underneath. And these hives won't know any different. They'll see these empty honey boxes, empty space. They'll be, oh shit, where'd our, where'd our honey go? They'll go into overdrive and they'll come and they'll fill those two boxes right back up again. Then we'll give them another one. So Thursday, or Wednesday, Thursday, maybe start pulling back on Friday, Saturday, or start pulling back on Saturday, Sunday. So then extraction can start on Monday. And then right on Monday, we can start setting another 500 boards again, as long as we have enough boxes. So the box, my box inventory might be my hold up there, but I could get a thousand hives turned over within a week. So it's not like, you know, I can get a lot done in a short period of time with these boards. So it kind of buys me the luxury of just allowing myself to wait for those perfect conditions to that point where I'm popping lids and they're full. I'm bringing in boxes that are 60 pounds. See, that's a partial. But maybe if I wait a few days, that one's full. Just the energy in the air. I think they're telling me to get busy. Oh, box is heavy. No cappings, well, just starting to draw cappings down on this one. I can see cappings being drawn down in this next box. That is 17%. What more do I want? Rock and roll. Got back both trailers, they've both been safetyed, they're ready to go. 
ready to be filled with honey and then taken to Bee Maid. My empty trailer sits here patiently waiting to be filled with honey. Ah, and the day has turned. Such a beautiful foraging day has now turned to kind of cloudy and coolish and rainy. So it's another day that we kind of strike off the uh, honey flow. Almost this last week, I don't think we've had a full day of uh, collecting honey. It's either been too windy, rainy, cloudy, cool, or just kind of rainy. So one good thing, this type of weather is really good for canola growth. This canola will be growing. It hasn't lost its flowers. It's starting to mature. You can tell it's starting to age, but it hasn't aborted those top flowers. It's just is turning into just a monster canola crop. Just we need sunny weather. We need heat to bring out that nectar to allow these bees to do their job and fill these boxes up full of honey. Things this last week have just stalled. It's frustrating. Things are just stalled and my box is, well now the honey's testing dry so now it's time to go but we're going to be bringing in partials. We're going to be bringing in boxes that are two thirds full instead of full. So we're not going to be racing against a clock because the honey, you know, because we have no, not enough space, we're going to be racing against the clock just because we're running out of time and we've got to get this canola honey out of the comb. We've got to get these boxes flipped over. So we'll take what we get, this first bit, we'll put the boxes back out and we'll see what comes afterwards. Uh, we can only, I mean I can sit here and wait and wait and wait, but this canola is only get dr going to get drier and it's only going to get harder to pull out of the comb and I'm going to have all these guys standing around doing nothing while I wait for the last third of these boxes to get filled up. So we're just going to pull a pin, get this canola out of the book out of the boxes and see what comes on that second half of flow. These hives are, well they're full. One, two, three boxes full and where I got a little bit optimistic I put a fourth in some of these and that's you know one third to two thirds full. The last week has been a little bit disappointing for the amount of flow that could have come in. I put the work ahead of these hives just kind of guessing on the momentum they were carrying through in the first little bit of the flow. And then this last week they just kind of stalled on me. A little bit frustrating. But uh, it's not like they quit working because they took all that nectar and they've cured it. It's, it's almost testing. I guess the extractor will tell us on Monday. But my tests are telling me under 18. So that is getting plenty dry and we can't really hold the horse any longer. we got to get these boxes flipped over out of the comb. Get the honey out of the comb and into the barrels. So what we're doing is we're lifting up the honey boxes with the easy loader. The three to four boxes up on top are full of honey. Basically we just lift up the boxes, the full honey boxes. We slap in two empties. We have the escape board and boxes back on top. It should be helping there. So we have just instantly provided these bees with fresh new space. Fresh new space right above that cluster. These bees will move down and they'll maintain they'll maintain their nest just as if we weren't even here. It's just all of a sudden that honey has disappeared and they have two empty boxes up on top of them. It's like boom they're out of they're out of honey. They're going to hit this. You can see the canola still in mid bloom along the horizon here. We're just up on the escarpment looking across Red River Valley right now. And there's just a sea of yellow down there. As soon as this board is inserted here, this honey is now removed from this nest. Empty boxes, they're going to go into overdrive and pack those two boxes full of honey. And I bet you, I bet you in two days from now when we're pulling these boxes back, I'm going to be making a video. Those two boxes will be full of honey. Not only that, those two foundations in there, if they're drawn out, that tells us we're going to put a third up on top. So it's just a little trick just to kind of, you know, jolt those bees just to work just that much a little bit harder to, you know, if they 
have four boxes of honey up over top of them. They're working away and they're curing it. Maybe they're getting a little bit lazy. Boom, it's gone. Empty boxes below. Where's my food? There's some flowers. Let's fill this puppy back up again and they'll do it in overdrive.